Do you ever find yourself in a moment where you finally get to do something that you want to do, but you're completely overwhelmed by every single thing that you want to do? This is my life. <laughs> and what do we often find ourselves doing instead? Nothing. We're thinking about doing all of these things. Or maybe we find other people online when we scroll our phone and we just watch other people do all of these things. And not us. This is... This is awful. <laughs> This is the worst artist's conundrum in the entire world, where you almost have too much drive and nowhere to direct to, no exact focus. If you haven't yet watched Ruthless's latest video on directing your focus on where and how to do something, one thing, I would definitely recommend you checking it out. But for today, I actually wanted to talk to you about the, the stopping, and the thinking, and the procrastination, and the why are we not doing art when all we want to do in the world is art. Why? So please uh, watch Struthless's video if you want to more get up and go versus the existential dread that I often cause with my videos. <laughs> So much already on this channel, I've talked about the fact that we do not need to capitalize every single thing in our life, especially our creative life, but this is a huge procrastination point that should be noted. Because we do think we need to capitalize every single thing, we don't get to doing art because we're like, is it going to make us money? Am I going to film it? Am I going to do all the things to share it and make it worth a while? No, we don't need to do any of that. Always remember, we do not need to capitalize our art. But for today, I did want to focus much more on something that is also stopping us, which is originality, uniqueness, and, and being creative. This is a lot of pressure when it's absolutely unnecessary. Everything you do is original and creative and uniquely you because you do it. So honestly, that's like the TLDR of the entire video. You are always uniquely you, but this is a awful stopping point for us and why we don't get up and do something because we're overwhelmed in the world world, the, the whirlwind of making things as unique as possible so that they will be out and, and you know, a, tr a trendsetter. I think a huge thing that's stopping us today from doing the art and just sitting in our procrastinative state is the idea of originality and uniqueness and it having to be you and what you are as a person and an artist and your style and what defines you. But that's that's a lot of pressure to put on one person who is an ever-changing being. Nothing is you. Check out my video, you don't exist, there is no you, period, to learn that you are 100% a different being every single day. And to have one artistic style is kind of almost a, a bad limitation. <laughs> it's, it's not... The best of artistic limitations, especially considering, you know, go check out Struthless's video. Creative limitations do work, they're good, but not when it's you and you are putting yourself in a box of you and who you are. So, who are you? Just a creative person. You are not a person who makes only this kind of art, whether it be I, I only do creepy or I only do fairy or I only do blah blah blah, whatever it may be, there is no such thing. There's no such thing. You can branch out of your creative style at literally any point in the entire world. And then on top of all of this, 
uniquely you and creative and you and your style thing, as soon as we finally come up with an idea, we see someone else has already done the idea and we're like, dang it, I'm not unique anymore. This isn't me, this is them. They've done it first, so I can't do it now. And the process starts completely over. This is obviously not the only thing that causes artistic procrastination, but I do think that there is a very large amount of pressure put on us artists to think that we need to make something that people almost expect out of us. That we have a brand to match and follow and live up to realistically. I'd say you're an ever-changing being, so is everyone. We can all change and just because you want to do something different, that's awesome. I'd say that's even more creative than just doing the same thing over and over and over again, obviously. But at the same time, audiences do often like say, hey, this is new and different, you can't do that. So if you are an audience versus an uh, artist, maybe we should have a different philosophy towards that and not be all like, hey, all of these albums don't match each other, I want the old sound back, or like any other analogy for an artist other than music. I want to approve and encourage creativity, creativity and differences, and you know, have more bands like 311 or Wookie Foot, or all of their albums sound 100% different. And if they were just making the same album over and over and over again, I'd be like, guys, this isn't new and fresh at all. You're just, you're just using the same sound over and over. I want new. I want fresh. I want different. Do you not? Do you disagree? <laughs> Obviously, this is, this is all my opinion. I know philosophy isn't the most opinionated thing, but it, it really is. It's all about your morals, your ethics, and this is something I, I, I morally believe, personally, I guess. <laughs> So I know it's been a while since we talked about Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher, and so I thought I'd give a quick refresh of, you know, my philosophy's foundation, as well as like the entire channel's philosophy's foundation, which is, hey, angsty teenagers who fell into nihilism, awesome. Nihilism is a required part of life. If you don't know what nihilism is, this is where nothing means anything. Everything means nothing. The world sucks. Rules don't matter. Religions don't matter. Governments all make up their own rules and laws to follow. All moral people make up their own rules and laws to follow. Nothing means anything and we're all technically just animals with a consciousness and life is almost purposeless and then we die that's nihilism so we do not stop here but we must come to this conclusion nihilism is basically having a realization that life is just a book we learn and if we throw the book into the trash life doesn't stop existing Life continues on. <laughs> we can make up all of our own rules. And this is the Ubermensch, or overcoming man. And basically, if we can just make up all of our own rules and morals and ethics, we can rule our own universe. A huge part of this, while living in a society, does have to do with also following society's laws because we can't just not follow the laws. I, I always have, I have to throw that out here on the channel. Don't do things illegally. But at the same time, we can't just follow things without thinking. We can't just say, okay, yeah, all of these laws, we are having to abide by them and the rules are all perfect and absolutely unquestionable. No, 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 no. Because there are many, many things that should be questioned and if we go around thinking things are just set in stone forever, then we would still be living in the 1950s. Do, do you want that? No. We do not want this. We want equality. We want the ability to vote. We want the ability to get married. We want the ability to, you know, smoke th stuff. And that's just like a quick what Nietzsche was all about. We get to nihilism and then we're the ubermensch, baby. But basically, this is just 
authentic thinking and thinking for yourself and being aware of your life, your surroundings, the whole like what is good, what is bad, nothing is truly good or bad, it's beyond good and evil, if you will. But what is the purpose of life after this? If, if we come to the conclusion of nihilism and so we have to be an ubermensch or be depressed forever, what's the purpose of life? Is that in overcoming man, we learn to make a life purpose, make up what life's purpose is. Life's purpose is, is what you make it. Life's what you make it. But what is important to you is what is important to the world, really. Or to, to the purpose of life, not the world. You're not the main character here. <laughs> but to a true extent, you, you are um, the main character of your own life. Just be aware that everyone else is also the main character of their life. So that is our quick recap on Nietzsche in the Übermensch, or Overcoming Man, but that that is not all. Beautifully enough, all of this concludes to one final conclusion. After we've overcome man, or in the process of overcoming man, because it's very much so like enlightenment and that you constantly have to practice at working at the overcoming of man every day. Like you have to practice at the working of enlightenment every single day as a Buddhist. What do we do this through? Art. Just like a, a monk, a Buddhist monk would do it through meditation. So art, meditation, one and the same in this scenario. It's all art, baby. Art is the purpose of life to the overall dramatic extent. If you're curious, I did write a 20-page paper on this idea and concept, the en entire thing. What I am wanting to share with you guys is the concept that I created with for my senior thesis capstone course for my philosophy degree. Honestly, I want it to be a book and I don't want to share it on YouTube because I want it to be a whole book, but if I don't start talking about it, it'll never get talked about. I'm just gonna ignore my entire main thesis this whole time. No. But anyways, yeah, I have a 20-page paper on this and it is called Making the Authentic Overman Possible in Relation to Freedom, Politics, and Ethics. But the real point of it all is art. Art is the point of life. Art is the whole how you overcome man. And if we do not have an equal amount of freedom for every single person to do art, then how is equality actually a thing in that no one can actually fulfill their life's purpose because no one has the time to do art and no one gets paid to do art even though it's the actual freaking purpose of life. So, yeah. If I was a politician, I would be fighting for artists. But do we live in a beautiful Star Trek world? No. And so what do we do today? We try to capitalize on our art and be as original as possible. And then what? What do we do when we can't be original and we have to follow rules? The concept that I created for my senior thesis paper is creative pessimism. And what this is, is the idea that everything has always been already done before. Not necessarily always. I'm, I'm sure, you know, people 5,000 years ago weren't feeling this way, but after that point in time, we really start to get more and more of that's already been done before. That's already a thing. This isn't a first new original idea. Nothing ever is. It's like a law. <laughs> if you you have an idea, someone else has already had that idea solely due to the amount of time people have been around. And so with this idea, 
how can we just get past nihilism and move on to the overman? How can we get out of this nothing means anything anymore if it's already been done before? If everything has already been done before, I can't make anything creative. I can't add to the world in any sort of productive manner because it's already been done before. What? So this is what I call creative pessimism. And it's a huge procrastinating block in our brains to where we think we have to be more original than almost humanly possible. But again, this is a lot of pressure for one single person. And also, everything is original. This sentiment is not true. Creative pessimism is bad. This is the nihilism of the stepping stone from nihilism to ubermensch. Creative pessimism may not be required to get to the ubermensch step, but it may also be at the same time. Because as soon as we admit to ourselves, like, yeah, everything's already been done before, we can be like, oh, flip flopping well. I'm gonna do exactly what I already still wanna do. I have a vision in my brain. Just like my partner, he wants to do, make cool enamel pins and stickers. And he's like, I made a cool monster, but like, it is identical. I think, to an Adventure Time thing, and I'm just like, but it's not though. It's literally a, a different character. Just because it may be in the same-ish art style, it's not the same character at all. You've made a new character. This is, this is a different thing. This is a whole new thing. So, oh well. On the point of creativity and procrastination and whatever, you know. I found this amazing guy on Instagram who created these little short videos, um, you know, the, the reels, about copying art. And this is a huge point in my philosophy in the fact that copying art is a form of art. This is a very you know, not necessarily problematic, but what's the word? Um, not everybody agrees with this sentiment. Some people think if you copy art or do anything of this sort, you are breaking a law and a rule that has been, you know, taken over the world as a actual taboo law. You cannot do this. This is against the rules. But who cares, right? Um, I think... <laughs> If you change something to a certain extent, if you put your your blood, sweat, and creativity into something, then it's not just a copy, it's art. Or it's practice and you have no business sharing it online. That's the other side of the truth there. But to get to what I was saying, I found this awesome guy on Instagram named Cool Looking Bug, or Max Colo. Um, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I wanted to share the video. Uh, I actually asked him uh, for permission and he said yes. So that's especially cool. I'm gonna show you how to find an art style. Right now, come on. But hey, first check out this movie I love. Damn, actually I'm just gonna steal this idea right here. You're probably thinking, Max, wait, 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 you can't just steal ideas. Well, newsflash, motherfucker, you can. I mean, look at a guy like Quentin Tarantino. This man's creepy ass made a whole beautiful career out of tastefully and selectively stealing ideas from stuff that he liked. If you start thinking about yourself as a taste collector, you're gonna find stealable ideas fucking everywhere. Take them. Take an idea from here, an idea from over there, maybe one from over there. Mix them into a combined idea that's original. With practice, you're eventually gonna find that magic mixture of stolen ideas and it will become your style. But in the meantime, there's no shame and just flat out copying something you love. I've been drawing fucking forever. I'm a professional and I still practice this way. Steal tastefully and eventually people will be copying you. So yeah, as Max said, steal tastefully. This is actually the most brilliant way of saying, obviously don't copy shot for shot, do a study of another person's art and then post that as you, your original, your own, you know, piece of work, because that's straight up stealing. That is just theft. You know, that is breaking a law, honestly. Um, and so, stealing tastefully, 
and being a taste curator or however Max said it. I loved it, but I forget. But curating your own idea of what looks good by just practicing with what other people have is a fantastic way of learning how to do art and finding your own art style. This is actually the exact way that my dad taught me how to do it. Um, he said that when he was growing up and learning how to draw, he would take a piece of paper, take a comic book, and then put the paper on the comic book and straight up trace the lines. And I know that sounds, you're like, what? That is against the rules. You cannot do that. But yeah, you can. Who says? <laughs> no one. My father literally says, do this. This will help you get better. And do you know what I did? I took my coloring books that had cool drawings and I traced them and I was like, this is so cool. I can draw cool monsters. And before you know it, there was nothing behind the paper and I was drawing my own cool things. And so the skills are there. The skills are built. You have muscle memory. Muscle memory is literally the name of the game because as you draw the curves that you want to get good at, if you're tracing whatever it is that you want to get good at, you will get better at it. I had another video by Max here, but it is very similar. Um, but I still wanted to share it and he gave me permission. So here we go. Apparently, you don't actually need to know how to draw anymore to know how to draw. All you gotta do is take a screenshot, right, like this. And you take another one. Kinda like that. And then you take those two photos, you rearrange them, lower opacity 50%, trace it, throw some colors in there. And that's a drawing. Seems like cheating, right? But you know what else they thought was cheating back in the day, man? Photography. Before the camera was invented, right, people had to just paint everything. And then someone invented the camera one day, and all the painters stood up like, what the hell is this thing, man? You just push a button and the painting appears? Like, what? what's next? Musicians without instruments who just record other people's songs and sing over them? Like, yeah, we're living in the future with, like, magical-ass technology. Which means anyone can make art, even if they don't have formal training. And in my opinion, it doesn't matter how you do it. What matters is how it comes out, and if you got good ideas, that's a good artist in my book. So, you already know exactly what I want to say. Um... No, it's not cheating. Tracing is not cheating. No matter how you feel about it, if you have a moral feeling about it that is bad or, you know, cheating, I can't think of another word, it's not evil, obviously. Another thing that really comes to mind is the whole, like, on Procreate and Photoshop and everything, you can go like this, but, like, shaking terribly, um... And you can have a perfectly smooth line if you have like the smoothness up or whatever it's called on Procreate. You don't technically need to be able to know how to draw, to draw a very beautifully done, just like cute little picture because it already does exactly the smooth line for you. So that plus tracing a photo, no. You literally need absolutely zero skill to be able to start drawing. And I love that. You shouldn't need any skill to start drawing. Um, maybe when it comes to the whole making a living doing art, people might have a feeling like you flip out a lot of art really quickly because you just trace a bunch of stuff and blah blah blah. But that's your art. That's what you're doing. That's who you are. And that's, uh, you communicate that to whoever's paying you, then that's brilliant. I don't know if you know this, but there is a huge amount of artists who use projectors. This is not new at all. I actually think that the woman with the pearl earring might be a projection, if I remember correctly, as to who was the very first one to do a projected painting um, but it's basically like how do you get the most perfect painting of a, a perspective on looking straight on and maybe you know with like dimension I don't know if you know like how cameras can have like different 
like focal distances and it'll change what the image actually looks like. Fun fact, the easiest way to do this is with a photograph and with a projector or basically not with real human eyeballs. Human eyeballs are, are, are fallible, if that's the right word. But we've got, we've got two eyes that put two images together, right? And so with that alone, we cannot make the most beautiful, perfect picture every single time uh, without there being some errors, without there being just like a subtle shift and like going like this or like this. And then all of a sudden, someone's face is going to, someone's face in a portrait, that I mean, is going to look a little messed up versus having literal exactly what you want, pixel by pixel, maybe projected onto a screen, or literally just using a photograph as a reference versus like a table with a vase and the fruit and the big cloth and the square with more cloth on it. That is, you're gonna have errors versus when you take a photograph and you have it pixel by pixel and exactly where something's gonna be. Those pixels will never move and never change because you're not using your eyes, you're using a lens. Now, is that cheating? 100% if you ask people 400 years ago, but not at all today. As Max said, we live in the day and age of technology, and I don't think my paintings in my oil class would have turned out as beautiful as they did. Uh, without the ability to take a photograph because I would be moving all over the place and things change, things move. I am not perfect and yet I can use a photograph and be much more perfect. The likelihood goes from this to this, okay? And so this is the exact same argument that happened you know, a, a hundred or two hundred years ago when people started projector painting and it's the same. Is digital art with a photo behind it cheating? No, it's not. It's taking advantage of a perfectly awesome process on which we, you can do stuff. And so to reiterate everything, art is the purpose of life. Without art, life literally has no purpose. Even if it's for the simple fact of enjoying other people's art. If I came home from work and I had no TV to watch, as you might be able to tell, I am a consumer of art because I love it so much. You know, maybe it's the idea of escapism, maybe it's the idea of just straight up appreciating and having inspiration from watching other people's things, but whether you're the consumer or the producer of art, it is the purpose of life. It is what we look forward to, it is how we enjoy ourselves, even if it's literally going out to, into nature and enjoying the art of, of what the earth has made for us, or the art of exercise and athleticism, Whatever the F your art may be, if you didn't have it, would life be worth living now? And so if you get stuck in the whole thing of like, I have to be me and I can't try any new styles because maybe like you want to emulate a very specific person and you're like, people will think I'm copying, you know, so and so, you know, F all of that noise. Just like do literally whatever you want because yeah, the classic anyone can do that kind of art, just do it. There's a couple of sound bites running around on Instagram and TikTok right now that's like, oh, you think you can do this? Well, you didn't. And it's like, yeah, art can sometimes be easy, but not everyone has the drive and effort to do so. And so it is awesome to celebrate the fact that you did something and other people didn't, I guess. But the other soundbite running around right now is like, oh, you think you can do this? Then do it. Just like, go ahead. Just go, go right ahead and do it because it's so much fun and awesomeness. Like literally anything in the entire world. It's like, oh, you think you can, you can do this awesomeness? Then go right ahead. Just just do it. All you have to do is Shia LaBeouf, just do it, okay? 
and we get it out there and then we have the quantity and the quality and everything we could ever want. But if we don't start, then we will never have any of that. We will never get the stuff out there. It'll all just stay up here. And if we're always worried about like sticking to one thing, we will never maybe try and find a, a new and better thing. I don't know exactly how to end this video, actually. I can't lie to you. Um, last time, to, to just reiterate some real quick, gotta reiterate it. Don't capitalize on every single creative thing that you do in life because that really does add to the pressure of it being you and your brand as well as like literally having to film and edit and write a thing and like just every single thing. Like maybe you even have to like clean off your desk to, to make a post. Like don't do it. Just just make f make stuff. Make stuff. Have fun. Just be awesome. And yeah, again, I don't know how to end this video. This is gonna be a crazy long rant, but this is something I'm extremely passionate about. Also, I have- I get a, a very overwhelmed all the time by every single thing I want to do. And maybe it's ADD, ADHD, maybe it's, you know, the world's ending and how can I care about doing art? Uh, when literally the world's on fire and global warming is happening and I need to clean my kitchen and take care of all the recycling and all of that awesome goodness and there's so many more things to do in life um, that are like have to do's versus want to do's. But on that note, I just want to remind you to recycle uh, literally as much as humanly possible um, and if you want to get into a new art field, try to be as sustainable as possible. <laughs> get things used, you know, if you check out a bunch of sewing tutorials, every single person is be sustainable as possible, you know, find used fabrics if you can, but also, you know, recycle again. Uh, and think of other ways and we can try and help save the planet. With this being like an art-based philosophy channel, um, let me know if there are any art-based uh, philosophies around recycling and saving the planet and how awesome and cool that is and all of that awesome, awesome goodness. And when I say art-based philosophy channel, I, I, this is a existentialism based philosophy channel, but existentialism is about the purpose of your existence and art is the purpose of your existence, so same, 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 same. I've been talking for a hot minute here, um, hopefully this video goes well, I hope you guys really enjoy it, I can't wait to hear all of your thoughts, and uh, a toodaloo, bye! Time.